Hello, everyone. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control, which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. Before we get to those callers, I'd like to remind everyone that looming on the horizon is yet another Mercury retrograde, and that one will start, although we've been in the shadow phase leading up to it, on March 22nd, and it will go through till April 15th. And I can hear a lot of you saying, didn't we just have a Mercury retrograde? And and your response would be totally justified because during a Mercury retrograde, there is increased possibility of technology complications and communications breaks, breakdowns. You know, after all, emails getting lost in cyberspace, delays of our projects, computers and cell phones not cooperating. In addition to people either not hearing what we're saying or misconstruing or misinterpreting our words. All of these things can be pretty darn frustrating. Yet the Posse of Angels and I choose to see Mercury retrograde as a blessing because every time, and we do mean every time there's a Mercury retrograde, it is a heralding sign of the new on the horizon. And it's actually giving us the time. It's giving us the opportunity to make sure everything is ready for that new arrival. And whether that arrival shows us up as a new job, a business opportunity, um, an opportunity to move locations, to travel, to experience just the right connection, magically manifesting that will help our dreams and our projects take off. Mercury Retrograde is getting us ready for the possibility of all of that happening. Now, I do use the word possibility of it manifesting because, as I've said on my program countless times, in order for anything to manifest, our vibrational frequency has to be of the same matching energy of that of the universe, high, bright clear and free of any attachment and expectation, and B, we simply have to be open to receive. Now, the Posse of Angels is reminding us to use this time to clean out those closets, to clean out the clutter, to review, to reconsider, to re-edit things, make space so that the new can come in. Um, attend to all of those things we might have been too busy to address before things started to slow down. And lastly, during a Mercury retrograde, people from our past often come back. Now, 
this might not be a good thing if we have still animosity, bitterness, resentment, or regret from people in the past because they come back in order for us to take another look at it and try to bring things through unconditional love and forgiveness into divine alignment. But if we've done that already, then Mercury retrograde can be a great time when people from the past come back. And this is a wonderful thing for Pete and myself because we are so excited to welcome back a very dear friend of ours. She will be visiting us um, and we haven't seen her in about six or seven months. So people from the past coming back, if <laughs> if uh, it's uh, that relationship has been brought into divine alignment. It's wonderful to see people from the past again. And if it might not be so wonderful, take the time to re- re-examine, put the re in front of examine, why you're still having these feelings and why you're still being triggered. So have fun with Mercury retrograde. Don't try to figure things out now. Go only with your intuition and be gentle with yourself during the next three weeks. Now, continuing March's theme of manifestations and miracles, we would like to uh, talk about the topic today, which is called Allowing More Miracles into Your Life. Now, the Posse of Angels want to start the show today, and they want us to consider what is a miracle? And why couldn't miracles be a daily occurrence? Now, the dictionary definition of a miracle is a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by natural or or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency, God, source, creator, universal. When this supernatural intervention intervention occurs in a human being's life, it is so life-altering that for those whose lives have been touched by this divine intervention, we are truly never the same again. Now, one of the greatest miracles that ever occurred for me was in the area of writing my books, and it came about because of the message from a tiny little bird. And if I was not open and I was not clear enough in my heart to hear God speaking to me through this little bird, well, I would not have received such an enormous blessing and such an enormous miracle in my life. You see, after my angelic walk-in experience in 2003, which I write about in my book, I am an angelic walk-in, which, by the way, is available on Amazon and also on my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com. It's also available 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 in audiobook form on audible.com. But after I had my angelic walk-in in 2003, and having connected to my divine eternal nature, I was able to see, hear, and communicate with my angelic family who call themselves the posse of angels. With this angelic connection, I became an open channel to bring forth messages uh, from God and the angels. It didn't matter what time of the day and it didn't matter what circumstances. I, I channeled messages and they flowed through me with ease and grace. One, on one morning, I was surprised as my eyes popped open at 5.30 a.m. This was very unusual as getting up for me is usually, uh, getting up early for me is around 7 a.m. Now, I tried to go back to sleep, but I felt this overwhelming urgency to get up and write. I turned on my computer and decided that I would continue bringing forth my third book that I was working on. As I put my hands on the keys, nothing came forth. Perplexed, I took a couple of deep breaths. I repositioned my hands, and still nothing happened. This was quite odd, as every other time I wrote with total 
in un uninterrupted ease. All of a sudden, the sound of a shrieking bird split the morning silence. The energy behind the bird's shriek was one of urgency and desperation. As I listened, I began to receive a series of shivers and tingles that went up and down my body. I immediately knew that this was no ordinary bird and that I needed to stop and go investigate. The noise drew me to our bathroom window, and when I looked out, I saw that a tiny bird had built its nest in our disused clothesline out, right outside of the window, and the bird was sitting on the nest. When the bird saw me, it locked eyes with me and began to chirp up a storm as he threw his head back and forth. He hardly drew breath as he seemed possessed to tell me something very important. After about five minutes, the bird completely stopped. He tilted his head to one side and just stared at me. I thought, what an odd experience, and I was glad for the renewed quiet so that I could go back and concentrate on my writing. When I sat down, and repositioned my fingers on the keyboard, I began to type out a very new, very different story to the one I had previously been working on. After about 30 minutes of writing, my fingers came to a halt. And as I read this enchanting, beautiful story for the first time, tears ran down my cheeks. The little bird wanted me to write my book angels of faith as the beautiful angels of faith to help others reconnect to their own divine eternal natures to remember how special each and every one of us is to remind us where we come from and the glorious journey home back to our one true home in heaven that we all get to take you know, since launching this enchanting book in 2010, it has been a magnet for people to connect with me and the work that I do. The channeled message and angelic tone in the book, well, it touches people's lives, it touches people's hearts, and no matter where they are in the world, many of the readers seem to be having the same magical experience. Well, for instance, shortly after launching the book, I heard from a client who ordered it in Australia. She told me that she loved the story, but that when she first read it, something strange had happened. She said that when she got three quarters of the way through the book, her eyes started to well up with tears, and she began to remember something that she'd forgotten long ago. I said, what a beautiful response. <laughs> and I asked her if I could use that in a testimonial. Now, four days later, I heard from a client in California who had ordered several of the books for both family and friends. He congratulated me and added that he had to tell me about his strange experience. He said that when he read the story, he got three quarters of the way through the book when his eyes started to well up with tears and he remembered something that he had forgotten long ago. I was incredulous as he spoke almost the exact same words that the client in Australia had uttered just days before. It was one week later that I heard from a gentleman in Virginia who worked at an old age home who had bought several copies of the book for the residents to read, thanking me for writing such a beautiful book. He said that with so many residents being terminally ill and many of them crossing over, the book gave them and their loved ones hope in the knowledge that we are divine and eternal as we live on. He then added that he had a rather peculiar experience when he read the book. He told me that he got three quarters of the way through the book 
when he felt his eyes misting over with tears, and he remembered who he was, and he felt an overwhelming peace inside of him like he had never experienced before. In one week, from Australia to California to Virginia, and since then many others around the globe were experiencing a reconnection to their divine, eternal nature and our true heavenly home behind the veil. Angels of Faith and its message that death is not the end has touched others and it has touched my life so deeply that I cannot even fathom what would have happened if I had just plowed forth on my own agenda of writing and I'd not taken the time to truly listen to the voice of God speaking to me through that little bird. You know, everyone, the funny thing about this is that the posse of angels is saying that these type of miracles are continuously happening all around us, and they're just waiting for us to be still enough to allow them to come in to affect our lives. But most people are so busy pushing and controlling life and focusing on the big things to happen that they do not tune in to how God wants to bring forth and bless us with absolute gems of messages coming along our path. Most people miss out on the miracles of life because they are small. They are seemingly insignificant, just like that little bird. And outwardly, they actually look like a diversion that is taking us off the path of fulfilling our expected agenda. But the funny thing about life is that the more we can let go of our limited plan and give our schedule over to the universes, to God's agenda, then things will always work out in the most miraculous of ways. Then uh, here come the posse of angels, they're chiming in, and they're saying that humans are under the misguided impression that life works out in straight lines. If I would have completely ignored the little bird and not allowed for any disruptions, stubbornly pursuing the writing of my other book, because that's what I had planned, then the miracle of angels of faith would never have occurred. The miracle of how angels of faith entered my life it has taught me that each time that I am urged to stop, reflect, and take time to receive and allow life to give to me, even if it's off the path that I had painstakingly scheduled, and even if it looks insignificant, I know that God is showing me the way to my very next miracle. The Posse of Angels wishes to share each is if you could just stop for a moment and put our focus on this then we give our lives the chance to actually reflect this beautiful wonder in every moment your miraculous body is keeping you breathing although we don't give it any thought it's circulating your blood the miracle of your heart beating every second and your body is miraculously regenerating new cells we have all been blessed with the miracle of free will and an abundant nature, and as such, each one of us is pure potential to create and manifest the fulfillment of our desires. You know, the Posse of Angels and I wish to remind all of us that when we choose to see life as anything, I mean anything less than miraculous, and that life would be better if we had something else or if we had more, then it merely means that our attention is focused on an attachment and expectation. It's taking us away from our divine nature. That's because we've taken our attention off of the magical present moment. We've created an illusion of a distant future. When we do this, we, in, we abandon the enchanted child within and we look elsewhere for something that we are willing to manifest that will make us feel better than our present moment. 
But the fallacy within all of this is that there only ever is the present moment. The Posse of Angels is reminding us that miracles do not happen in the future. And they do not happen because we wish for them to manifest. The fuel that is generating the energy behind those miracles is the hand of God in the undefinable, the inexplicable, the infinitely seemingly impossible circumstances brought together at just the right moment in order for all the far-flung puzzle pieces scattered all over the universe to come together and produce something so synchronistic, synchronistic that it is unfathomable for us to believe that it happened. And that is something that can only happen when we let go and we surrender our restriction and attachment and expectation as to what needs to happen or what should happen. You know, once we open ourselves to shedding all restrictions, we open to receive in limitless and boundless ways and we allow for miracles to come into our lives. So thank you very much, Posse of Angels, for that beautiful reminder of how we can all allow more miracles to come into our lives. And let's get an added, an added message from our lovely, I use the Druid Animal Oracle deck. And as I was shuffling before, <laughs> I heard hoot, 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 and in flew the lovely owl. There we have our beautiful owl. I'm not sure what kind of owl he is, but um, very wise. With owl flying in today, <coughs> excuse me, the message is to be wise. And the message is to detach from our expectations and attachments as to what we think should happen so that we can open to the limitless possibilities for God and the angels to co-create miracles in our lives. It's also the card of initiation and new beginnings as so many of us have completed a cycle and are now ready to step forward into our next one when Mercury retrograde goes forward. In many traditions, owl, spirits, um, owl spirit animals are symbolic of death. However, it should not be taken literally because it simply means a transition in life, important changes that are taking place and that are about to happen. When Al shows up for so many of us, do pay attention to the winds of change blowing into our lives. Perhaps you're about to leave some of your old habits behind. Perhaps you are leaving a situation that no longer serves you. Perhaps its message brings something new into your life. New things like we spoke about today, like a new job, like a new business opportunity, like moving locations. Perhaps a new love is on the horizon. Or it's the manifestation of those connections and those opportunities to help you to miraculously fulfill your dreams and your wishes. So thank you to our lovely owl for hoot, hooting in today and uh, flying in today and helping us to, uh, to realize that, yes, many of us are, will, are experiencing an initiation, new beginnings and start. So I would go further and say, please do take this Mercury retrograde and um, take the time to slow down. Take the time to, yes, clean out those closets, uh, literally and figuratively. Um, you know, if your closets are pristine clean, if all the drawers of your desk have been brought back into uh, declutter, then uh, take a look at... Uh, you know, bringing um, all things with you in balance. Perhaps take the time to look at your health. Are you attending to your diet and exercise? Are you, um, 
Are you keeping your thoughts positive? Are you doing things emotionally that nurture and nourish your soul? So we can look at all of those things to review and reconsider during our Mercury retrograde. You have been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. Just a reminder that Angel Healing House Radio airs every week on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Transformation Talk Radio. And after this short break, we'll come back and we will take some of your calls for those free angel readings. You can call into the show on one 800 930 2819. We will be back after this short break. Take your own journey with the angel with Claire Candy Hoff's Heaven Sent Guided Angel Meditation CD. Letting go of concerns and living in the now. This beautiful CD walks listeners through practical exercises to help free them from the burdens, worries, and concerns of daily life. Walking a quarter of the way across the bridge, you see a bright emerald green light and sense a loving presence. This is Archangel Raphael's green healing energies, nourishing and revitalizing you. Take a moment. To bathe in this green healing light. Giving you much more than just relaxation and stress release, this wonderfully narrated CD provides vivid visualization, soothing and inspiring music, and an angel's choir that will bring you peace, clarity, and a new awareness. Visit angelhealinghouse.com today. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff. Angelic walk-in angel burial at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, Very exciting and angel news as uh, just Los this Angeles. past week. My book, my Amazon number one uh, best-selling international book, I Am an Angelic Walk-In. It's actually my autobiography as I had an angelic walk-in experience on January 11th of 2003. Um, this came out uh, in 2016. Or is it 2017? <laughs> it's been at least a year that it came out, but now it's in Audible. Now, this was 2016. It's now available uh, in Audible and an audio book on audible.com. So you can listen to it and uh, find out the amazing adventure of how the former soul that was in this body of Claire Candy uh, after trauma and uh, much desperation uh agreed to walk out of the body and I, Angel Ariel, walked in to create heaven on earth for others and myself these past 15 years. So go to Amazon if you want to read it or you can go to um, purchase the, uh, the audio book. So let's go to our first callers. By the way, if you want to call in for a free angel reading with myself and my wonderful angelic family, the Posse of Angels, do call in on 1-800-930-2819. Let's go to our first caller. We have Beth calling in from Maui. Hi, Beth. How are you today? Beth, you're on the air with Claire Candy Huff. Hello, Hello, Beth. Are you there? Yes. How are you? Aloha. Aloha. Uh, it must be early there. Yes, it's very early. <laughs> Just saw a bunch of whales jumping, so everybody's waking up here. Oh, <laughs> the whales are even joining Angel Healing House Radio. <laughs> yes, as soon as you start talking about miracles, they started jumping out of the water. Oh, isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful sign. Yes. So what's been happening with you? Well, um, I'm getting ready to come back to the mainland, and I wanted to know if there was a message from the angels to give me to my new adventures. Okay. Okay, new adventures. Okay, while I'm shuffling, they're saying... 
hold tight to those new adventures that you're coming back to. But please do realize that we are in a Mercury retrograde and um, uh, allow, allow the time for these new adventures to present themselves in the most optimum of ways. Um, a lot of us have been waiting a long time, um, especially, um, especially the sign of Libra like myself. Um, and, uh, and we are, we are like champing at the bit to go forward, but we have to allow the angels and God to present this to us or these things to us in the most optimum of ways. So when they're saying, when you get home, uh, you are going to see, uh, your surrounds, you're going to see your home, um, not in a different light, but you're going to want to. Um, declutter. You're going to want to lighten the load, and uh, have and um, having been away, sometimes all we need is time out to be away to come back and see things differently. So um, just be prepared for that. You may have a couple of weeks or maybe even the three weeks of donating things, uh, you know, sort of decluttering and that kind of thing, making ready for the new to come in. Let's go to the cards and see what's coming in for our beautiful Beth. Have you been talking to my husband or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but, you know, this will naturally... <laughs> the, the posse of angels are saying this will naturally happen because you've been away. And sometimes, sometimes when we're away, um, I know this happens to me a lot, and I come, you know, I come back, and I go, oh, you know, I, I didn't see, you know, that. You know, that's been hanging around for a long time. I don't get any use of it. It would, you know, I would... Um, I'm going to donate to that to Goodwill or something like that, or to those you know organizations where somebody could get use out of it. Um, but but that just naturally happens when we've had a break, and then we see things in a totally different perception. Also, they also they also want you to know that you have gone through a transformative shift since you have been away, and that your perceptions and your attitudes um, have shifted. And you will be able to see things in a different way. And you're now ready to let go of a lot that you weren't ready to let go of beforehand. The first card, oh, I love this card. Okay, I love this card. Okay, this is the temperance card. It's the balance card. Um, it's, the, it's the making sure that things are balanced in our life, you know, that, uh, that we... Um, uh, make sure that, you know, things are um, on an even keel. We have our equilibrium and all of those things. So they're saying when you get home, you're going to uh, have an opportunity to see things in a different way and to balance out. So a lot of those things, and they keep saying to declutter, a lot of those things that you will be letting go of will bring bringing back the balance uh, those are their words, by the way. Okay, <laughs> the next card that's coming out for you is the strength card. <laughs> and you will need a great deal of strength to declutter. <laughs> you will need a great deal of strength to declutter. But, but then again, it's, it's, not, it's not the physical strength. It's that now you have the emotional strength to know who you are and that you don't have to get your identity from, you know, a lot of, a lot of different things that you might want, might, uh, have been attached to before. Um, you know, um, a lot of, when I've helped people declutter, you know, a lot of things that they were holding on to was they were holding on to things emotionally. Um, and once they, uh, when they were, um, they were surprised how easily it came to them that they could let go. So, and on this card, I love this card in the little Victorian um, fairy deck because uh, it shows a woman sitting next to a beehive, and um, and she's getting the sweetness out of life by uh, by allowing things to go. And um, the next card for you is oh my gosh, you got the sun card. 
<laughs> and the sun mm-hmm. card, the sun card is radiant. And also it's saying the more that you do declutter and the more that you do let go of those things, the more you're, al- you're allowing the sun to shine in. I the like more, that. Yeah, the more you're creating, you're actually creating space for the universe then to bring more into you. Because how can the universe bring in when we're already full? Um, and so I'm not saying get you know to get rid of things that you're that you're emotionally attached to, but uh, but you'll know. They'll say with fresh eyes, you will know when you come back, and it'll be it'll be easily easy to be to see this when you come back. So I hope that's been helpful for you. Probably why. That's probably why I haven't been circulating as much on this trip as I normally do. You, um, I'm sorry, what was that? That's probably why I haven't been purchasing as much clothes on this trip as I normally do, because <laughs> I need to get rid of stuff. Yeah. And they'll say, and, they, uh, and they're saying, um, it'll be easier this time. Yay. For some for some reason, it's because you are you feel lighter in your soul. You feel less burdened. Um, you don't feel like your wings are clipped anymore. You feel a sense of liberation, like you want to be light, so that you want to be available and free. So, so that manifests in the energies that we have around us. And if the energies around us um, have things and things that we don't use anymore and things that we can pass on, then, uh, then it just weighs us down. But, uh, but your attitude now is lighter and freer um, and, uh, and less burdened. So that will be a natural offshoot of that is then a reflection in your home. Yay. Oh, yay. (laughs) Absolutely. So I'm glad that's been, I'm glad that's been helpful. So say hi to the whales and say hi to the dolphins. Oh, I will. Thank you so much, Angel. Have a beautiful day. Okay. Have a beautiful day. I love you. Bye-bye. Love you too. Bye. Thank you so much for Beth calling in from Maui. And uh, I have been to Maui and I have seen those whales dance and the dolphins. And it's just, it is absolutely magical. Let's go to our next caller. We have Stephanie in New York. Hello, Stephanie. You're on the line with Claire Candy Hoff and Angel Healing House Radio. How are you today? Hi. The first thing I just want to say is I know I noticed uh, some of what you were talking about with the retrograde. I ran into someone yesterday who I hadn't seen in years and who I didn't always have such a great uh, dynamic with. He was sort of like this grumpy old man and we were part of the same kind of healing community. And I don't know. And then I saw him yesterday and it was totally different. And uh, we gave each other energy work and he didn't know about my past health problems and he apologized for the way he treated me in the past, he said he didn't know. And, I don't know. It was nice. It was a surprise. It was a nice surprise. Oh, how lovely! Yeah, and uh, one of the things that's been on my mind lately is a friend of mine who I've known for a long time. Uh, I've been trying to help with something. Uh, you know, he has a lot of money issues, and but he doesn't budget. And I've been trying to, you know, talk to him about this kind of stuff. And he's, he's someone I have a really nice spiritual connection with, though. And he's been, I guess, like, frustrated with me. And he doesn't want to make a budget. And he wants to just sort of, I guess, live from this place of abundance. But then it also puts him in crisis because he's spending money he doesn't have. And then he runs out of money for food. And and so I've been, and I've been sort of struggling a little bit with this because I've been, I was originally thinking, well, maybe it'd be better to come from that place of peace and like sort of planning and, and taking care of needs and then wants. But he wants to come from this place of just, I'm important and I deserve things and, and to have these luxuries, even though he already has plenty, but he doesn't see them. And then I was thinking about energy and I was like, well, I wonder what's a better energy because 
coming from sort of like a budget and having this tight budget, it's not the most expansive place. Um, so I don't know. I was just sort of wondering, you know, in terms of energy and sort of being an energy match for changes and abundance, sort of, you know, what they had to say is sort of a way to sort of match better. Well, the thing that I was the thing that I was picking up when you were um, speaking was balance. Was they were showing me the temperance card, that neither is right, neither is wrong, but because we're humans living in this th- this human form, uh, and while we are under the uh, the energies of physical manifestation, which does take longer than when we're across the veil in heaven, because in, when we're across the veil, when we think of something. Bang, it's there because there is no, there's no time. There's only zero point, uh, which is happening continuously. And, uh, you know, um, and when we're in this physical form, uh, things to, do take a little bit uh, longer to, to manifest. Um, so both is correct. Both is correct. Um, now, if we swing too far the way that your friend is, um, you know, in thinking I'll live in the moment um, and I will, you know, just carry on and, you know, this is pretty and I'll have this and I'll have that and I'll have that and then we don't have any money for food. Um, We could always live on the premise that I'm always looked after um, and I'm always abundant, Um, but then we we might not have food or, you know, so then we have to rely on other sources to uh, to provide for us. But then if we live on a very strict budget and we swing the pendulum all the, way, the other way, uh, then that is very constrictive. You know, oh, I would really like that, but, mm, you know, I can't afford that. Uh, where that, whatever that is, could come in in a number of ways. So it's the feeling. It's the feelings that, in, if if we if we choose to be in one or choose to be in the other, it's the feelings of that that are going to um, that need to be balanced out. Uh, that you know we won't uh, uh, we won't feel good one way or we won't feel good the other way. So maybe this is an opportunity for you to really allow him to be where he is, because neither way, as I said, is right or wrong. Um, you know, as light workers, if you want to call us that, you know, that's the term of those people like us who are awakened and conscious to met to much of this. Um, we, we tend to, um, uh, you know, our first port of call is to help or save or enable somebody when there, the, that person is not in the wrong place. He's exactly where he needs to be for his life's lessons. And so maybe he needs to be hungry or maybe he needs to experience whatever that is in order to find his way out of it. Because if we keep saving somebody, then they have no opportunity to hit rock bottom or to be hungry or that kind of thing. Um, So it's also for you to temper and to learn to let go and surrender um, of maybe a helping or a, or a or an an, an an enabling mode and that kind of thing. So I'm just shuffling the cards at the moment. Um, so it's a lesson for you, and it's also a lesson for him, um, because it, we can tell somebody something, and you know maybe this is the second, third, fourth, maybe it's the hundredth time this, is ha- <laughs> this has happened to him. Um, but, you know, sometimes people might have to take 500 times in order for it to sink in. Well, maybe I should budget or maybe I should be a little bit more rest- restrictive. or, And it's maybe for you to be a little bit more free to, um, uh, to have faith in the universe that your needs will always be met abundantly. May not come in the way that you think they're going to come in, but they will always be met. So let's go to the cards and see what comes out. So that's really the balls in your court. You can either keep doing this um, and trying to fix him when he's not broken. He's exactly where he needs to be. Okay, the first card that comes out is the Ace of Spring. And the Ace of Spring is 
uh, in this deck is the Ace of Wands. The Ace of Wands is a new beginning. It's a new beginning around um, around ideas and uh, our vision and our creativity. Um, could be a new beginning for you because the reading is for you um, to uh, to put more of your emphasis on on those things that really do excite you. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, <laughs> helping him is not exciting, but it also looks like it's a dead end street. You know, we can, we can help. Yeah. yeah. So the new beginning is to turn the mirror back on yourself and start to, uh, s start to fly that kite, which we can see in that picture there of the ace of wands, the ace of spring. So going into spring, uh, use this, use this time in the Mercury retrograde to rethink um, how you approach people and, uh, and sometimes just allowing them to be where they are um, is, uh, is, is uh, you know, providing an enormous help for them. Yes, we can suggest things and we can advise things, we can counsel others, but at the end of the day, each of us has to find that light within ourselves. Uh, the next card, <laughs> love it. The next card is the Eight of Cups. And the Eight of Cups is walk away. Walk away. Because the walk away card, he doesn't even know where he's going, but he knows that what he's doing is is not providing him with optimistic or positive or bright or helping energy. Um, you know, you've done all that you can, and this card is suggesting that it's now time to walk away and to put those energies on your passions, your ideas, and all of those things. Um, and the next card is the King of the King of Swords. There's those that mighty King of Th Swords, and uh, the this is this is often. Uh, the king and the queen of swords are the uh, are the authority cards. You know, take your own counsel, Stephanie. Take your own counsel, and then uh, and then utilize that in your own life. You know, take a little bit of his, sprinkle that ingredient. Maybe maybe uh, treat yourself to something that maybe your strict budget doesn't allow yourself. You know, allow yourself a little bit of leeway and sort of balance things out. They did tell me to pull one more card for you, and that's the Four of Spring. And that's the, that's the celebration card. Celebrate your hard work. Yeah. Celebrate your hard work and maybe dip into that budget a little bit and, um, and gift yourself. Gift yourself with something and, uh, you know, say, I've done a good job with my savings. Maybe I'll, you know, gift myself something. And so not that you want to swing all the other way, but you want to make sure that you have that balance in your life. So hope that's been helpful for you. Yes, thank you. It has. Um, and Chris, Chris gave similar advice last night, which was kind of interesting. So. Except for that last part about treating myself, but um, yeah, it, it's a challenge, but I guess it's a good one to just sort of let, like, you know, to have that desire to help someone and to see them making the same mistakes, and but to let go, uh, that's definitely one of my challenges I'm trying to work on right now, and it, it hasn't been that easy. Um what you can do you know, is what you I, can do is to see them, yeah. see them healthy, see them prosperous, see them, you know, uh, surrounded by, uh, you know, um, abundance, um, and you can you can pray for their abundance, and that that energy in itself is life affirming. Yeah. Okay. I can do that. Then I feel yeah. like I can do something. But yes, still ex be exactly. Their choices. Yeah, Thank so that'll be helpful. Really You're welcome. Take care and have a have a blessed day. You too. Enjoy the rain. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for calling in. Uh, we've only got about three minutes left, but I will shuffle the cards and I will pull three cards for this coming week and see what uh, what messages 
we could have in the last minutes of the show. Uh, once again, do remember to be kind to yourself during a mer Mercury retrograde. Do not try to figure things out. Do not try to push things. Um, most of the time, projects stall. People do not get back to us. Um, uh, emails get caught in cyberspace. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's so there's so many things that that can go awry. Um, one of my favorite is that people misconstrue or misinterpret what we are saying because it's not just emails and texts and phone calls. It is actually face to face when pe when you have a conversation with something somebody and they say you didn't say that or you didn't mean that or you know a lot of times those things can go awry so just be a little bit more soft be a little bit more um, accepting i guess and uh, certainly on the roads you know we communicate with uh, signals and we communicate with our uh, hand gestures and things like that so be a little bit more kind during this Mercury retrograde season, and we are all going through this together, so we will all experience it. Okay, let's see what cards come out for us. As a conscious collective, and as I often say, if you're uh, listening to this or you're watching it, then the messages are for you. Okay, first card that's coming out is the Six of winter, which is the Six of Swords. Uh, we see our little fairies, they're in a boat, and uh, and the, the, the icicles are thawing. This is a movement card. It means that movement is on the horizon for many of us. As I said in today's channel, we, uh, we will be moving. Uh, maybe those new jobs, maybe those new opportunities, those business um, connections. Um, moving locations, uh, you know, traveling, traveling for business, traveling for, uh, for those opportunities. We are on the move. Don't try to force this. It's going to happen, but there is movement coming up for many of us, conscious in the collective. The next card that is coming up for us is the four of pentacles. And, do, and this they're saying, do not hold on so tight as to what you expected to come in, allow the universe to give to you in the limitless ways and magical, miraculous ways, and it will cause us to have an emotional overflowing in our hearts, this beautiful, overwhelming, emotional overflow flooding with the Ace of Cups. So I hope that's been helpful for everyone. So thank you so much. That just about wraps the show up for today. Thank you to my callers who called in. Thank you to all the wonderful replies that I get from around the world, communication from people who get garner so much from the Posse of Angels and myself on Angel Healing House Radio. And do remember to, uh, to tune in next Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time as we will do this all again. If you're interested in my books, I Am an Angelic Walk-In and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness. And of course, that lovely channeled book, Angels of Faith. Please do go on my website, angelhealinghouse.com, and you can also call Angel Healing House, 8277-3716. This week, please allow yourself to have an absolutely glorious, glorious week. Go forth and fashion a beautiful life for yourself. Love, and as always, angel blessings, and I look forward to speaking with you again next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.